episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Hey, this is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dolly Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Guam. I'm going to the Fear Factory. This is George Corps from Under Fisher. This is Jasmine Delodrop. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. This is Mike Nitz from Cool South Tennessee. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Evans. This is Rex from Kill Devil Hill. This is Gary Bruce from Simple Tour, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Hey, we've been talking about Evil Dead, which is... You know, you got me straight away. But, uh, okay, yes, uh, yeah. thank you for joining us on the show. Of course, we are here to it's talk good. about your band, Suadakura. Oh. Uh, uh, is that is that what, <laughs> how you pronounce the name? I've always wondered that. How do you guys pronounce Suadakura? So is we say, I mean, if, you, if we're talking in English about it, about the band, I pronounce like Suadakura, like Sudakura? suicide and dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But in, Ger- in Germany, we, we just use the German pronunciation, which is Suadakura, like Z- with Z, you know, Zui Dakra, because the S is pronounced a little bit different in German. It's like Zui Dakra, but uh, there is no, not a rule because it's a, like, you know, it's not it's a, your name uh, backwards. Existing, yeah, exactly. It's not an name? existing name, so you can even say how it's, <laughs> if there is a perfect pronunciation for it. But the funny so thing is can... me being here in Australia, though, with our accent, you know, yeah. we, we can make things sound pretty terrible. I, I'm always saying that, like, because... Uh, it's very rough. Our accent is very rough. Have you ever noticed? It's okay. You can admit we sound like a backwards record sometimes. Yeah, mate. You know, <laughs> you're strange. Yeah. But of course, I will say, uh, I can say Wolf Bite is the new album. Yeah. And it's incredible. It's a really good fucking album, dude. And it comes out on uh, June 25th. And man, how was it putting this thing together? during everything that's been going on in the last year and those challenges? Um, to be honest, it wasn't really a big challenge for us at all because uh, our, the decision to record this album in a different way than we did in the past uh, was made even before this whole pandemic thing happened. Because the, the thing is, you know, we all settled down to family life, so we became fathers. Oh, and we were not able... Yeah, we, thanks. <laughs> and we were not able, you know, uh, with small kids uh, to enter the studio for three or four weeks. So we knew, okay, on this album, we had to find a different way, different approach to, uh, you know, to record that album. And uh, we came up with the idea to record everything on our our own in my home studio, because we have the experience of 25 years being in studios, really, you know, recording for 13 albums before. So I knew uh, what I have to focus on, you know, with with the guitar playing, editing and stuff like that. And then, we just uh, wanted to find a studio where we can send the final pre-mix uh, for, the, for the final mix and the mastering. And um, that gave us the opportunity to work on the material uh, wherever we had time. So you, if you don't have a deadline, you're not in a position, okay, you have to uh, you carry on and move and you have to be faster. Then uh, sometimes you go in the studio and then you have that limited time of two, three weeks. After it, you know, you listen to the album a few times and uh, you realize, okay, there were a few things you could have done better. Um, but this time, this doesn't happen at all. So we had no deadline. So uh, as soon as we had the feeling that everything is right, 100% this time, then we will send it to the studio. So that gave us the freedom to work on the material um, up to the point where we were like 100% satisfied. So it was a cool experience, a new one for us, but it was cool. So uh, we were not struggling with uh, that way of working. It was the total opposite. Did you find though with that, that you had, uh, you didn't have a deadline, but did you have a goal? You're like, look, we have to have it done, not deadline, but it has to, just so no one sort of like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll, I'll go and record bits, you know, later on, on my phone or, on, you know what I mean? Stay, keep everyone yeah, focused. Yeah, sure. yeah, of course. Uh, this is a thing that I learned from the past because we always introduced um, some guest musicians in the past yes. during the recording. So I started at a certain point of the band's career, I started to, to deal with that time management. So, you know, I was working with Excel files and, you know, 
scheduling everything for everyone. And this was the same way of approaching with uh, Wolfby, even though there was no, not, not a deadline. Of course, there was like um, an arrangement with the label that we said that we just uh, fixed that, you know, a big goal like, okay, we're going to release it to 2021. That was the only thing, we, we, but we didn't know if it's going to be in the first half of the year or second half. Um, I mean, with the deadline, uh, that specific date, you know, you had to prepare everything and go, go to the studio. This one, at this time, you know, we had like one and a half years to work on it, which is pretty much enough. But I still had to do this schedule thing because also on Wolfby there were so many um, guest musicians involved. Yeah. So otherwise, otherwise we would have worked on it for years and there wouldn't be any result. You know, so you still have to to do have a very good time management. I mean, there's you know there's like uh, not having a deadline and then there's Chinese democracy. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like nine years or some shit. But um. Yeah. But, you know, how was it in regards to, you know, recording it and and having it in the can and giving enough time to get it pressed on vinyl and things like that? Because that's something I'm hearing a lot uh, is that uh, everyone's everyone's been everything's been slowed down in a sense, um, mm. productions and things like that. Was that difficult as well? Um, not really, because the thing is... Uh, you know, we were like working on the material, like I mentioned before, uh, whatever we could. So sometimes we had like three, four weeks, we had no time to work on it, which is pretty good because then we yeah. could, you could re-listen to it and just find out, okay, this is something I have to work on it or, you know, to adjust things here and there. But um, with the production of the whole album, um, there was only one thing we were struggling with. Uh, it, it was the effect with the vinyl production. Yes, that's what because, I mean. Because first of all, we just uh, started to make a time schedule for promotion and release with our label uh, when we had the master finished. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, otherwise, you, you know, there's so, always something that can go wrong. And you have some deal with delays, uh, production delays and stuff like that. So this time, uh, we, we decided, okay, let's first finish the, uh, the album master and then we just talk to the label and make a schedule for like, uh, you know, marketing and promotion, stuff like that. But the thing is, we knew from the, the experience in the past that you need like about six or seven weeks for a vinyl production. Mm. So vinyl was also the first thing that was finished with the, the artwork because it takes usually longer than a CD production. But even though... Uh, you know, because of the pandemic, I don't know what the reasons are, but you know, there are, there are some huge delays uh, with the vinyl production. And this is the only thing we, we could not, you know, um, finish until the release date, which is the 25th of June. Uh, so the vinyl will be released something about two or three weeks uh, later than the, the um, original release of, of the album. So that was the only thing that where we just, yeah. Uh, felt you know that it's a, it has something to do with the pandemic. Everything else went very smooth and very good in time. Did you write more than what was was put down? Hey, did did, uh, did you have? There was like, like, sorry, there was yeah, there was like a connect, connection. Oh, okay. I'm here just because I'm in the ass end of the world, mate. That's what happens. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. Okay. Here. And you're, I think you're over there. <laughs> I think that's what happens. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah. So, okay. just, you know, just get a stick and so, poke it down. <laughs> um, our yeah. internet works that way if we kick it. But, uh, what was I saying? Did, did you write more songs for the album that didn't make it? Have you got, like, B-sides and, and stuff? You know, because you've had that amount of time. Did you sort of overwrite? Or did uh, you have the set goal? Um, songs? Uh, not really. It has to do with uh, the way we just wrote the album because it's a con con lyrical concept based album. Yeah. So, so the thing is, before I even wrote one note on my guitar, I already knew that we're gonna have like nine songs that are the whole story is divided into nine chapters, and I already knew that um, the, the atmosphere I have to create with the song for each song. So um, we worked this time like. 
you know, in the chronological order from the first to, to the last song. So uh, I've worked as long as I needed to finish the first song. And when we were all satisfied with the result and uh, also Chris who was responsible for the lyrical uh, concept and the artwork approved it, as soon as he approved it, then I moved uh, on to work on the second, uh, second song. And then we just, you know, until the whole album was finished. And um, so that was the reason why we had no time or have no more material composed than, than it was necessary. Because we just put all the energy and the focus on the material and on the nine songs. And, uh... Excellent result though. It's amazing. Like that Thank focus. I, yeah, yeah. And I genuinely mean that. It's a really good album, man. Okay. I can't wait for everyone else to hear it. But uh, what, what is the concept you're running with this time? I mean, what, how does Wolf Bite and, and the album cover tie into hmm. that whole lyrical concept? Um, the thing is, you know, to explain the, the whole concept, I mean, I, I won't go into the details because otherwise this interview would take like four hours <laughs> because yeah, it's a very complex time. story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, um, I started with Chris Vervent, the guy who I mentioned before. Um, I started a um, uh, project back in 2013, which is called Rams of Odoric. And this is like an illustration fantasy artwork um, project combined with uh, orchestra, orchestral soundtrack music. So I, I was the guy for, for, the, for this whole orchestral stuff and Chris was the guy who uh, designed the whole fantasy story, which is a very complex, big story, you know, something like Lord of the Rings, you know, meets Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, like this, you know. Sick. Um, and the thing is, we just divided the whole story into three chapters, which was the first age, second age, and third age. And um, back in 2015, it was the first time we thought it would be cool to tell the same story from a metal band point of view, because the, the all orchestral stuff uh, was telling, you know, this... Um, the things that are happening in the story, you know, the events that are going on, because you can compose much wider than a metal band, which is, you know, uh, which is uh, like two guitars, bass guitar and, and the drums. And then uh, Chris came up with the idea, maybe not to talk about um, this whole events and story, but more go deeper into the, uh, the main characters, what they think, what they feel, because there will, would be a better way to express it with a metal composition mm -hmm. so that was the basic introductional thing you know for this concept and uh, in 2016 we, we have released um with Sri Dakra the first album that was covering the first age story and it, it was called realms of adoric and this time wolf bite is based on the second age story ah. wolf bite the thing is um alaric uh, which is son of adoric is the main character and he get enslaved as a young guy when his father was killed. And um, then he had to fight against wolf and he killed the wolf. So the tribe that enslaved him uh, called him a lyric wolf bite. That's uh, where the title comes from. You know? And at the end of the day, he discovers his father is not dead. And then he becomes evil guy with other forces and stuff like that. So very complex story. And um, but this is, you know, what this lyrical concept is based on. And uh, there will be another Sudakra album in the future, which will covering the third age. So Net, I think Netflix need to back that money track up to your head. <laughs> that sounds cool. I want to yeah. see this thing as well. Like, imagine that. This, this is going to be, this is very, very it's huge epic thing. It's huge. And the, the thing about this release, what I really love about it is, uh, oh, oh, by the way, because you were asking about, you know, the connection between the artwork, uh, the artwork presents a lyric with his uh, helmet and the wolf on it, wolf head. So it's, it's just simply representing the main character. Um, but talking about Netflix, I, the, the thing, what I love about this um, release is that uh, there was just going to be a special edition with a comic book, 48 pages. That tells the story in a, in a comic artwork, which looks awesome. I mean, it's the same uh, style as Chris used on uh, the album, so almost black and white, only with 
uh, blood red highlights on it. But it's, it's pretty awesome because sometimes, you know, the lines I sung on this record are written in the speech bubbles. Uh, so it's, it's kind of funny reading that, that comic and, you know, you immediately have this song in your mind and you sing with it. It's perfect. But, but it brings you the, the whole story a little bit closer, you know, to, to the well, audience. Man, that's unreal. That is so cool. Yeah. That's a really awesome thing. And Chris did an amazing job, man. Right. Love it. Love it. And, and talking about uh, the guests that you've got on here, you've sort of brought in a bunch of guests that you've worked with before. Uh, and uh, man, like they're all, they're all like really, really amazing, talented people. But um, what's her name? Tina, Tina Stable. Is that her name? Stable. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, she's incredible. She's, she's amazing. And you've worked with her before. I mean, Oh, yeah. How uh, to be honest, where is she from? Where I mean, I, I apart from working with you, I, I haven't heard of with anything else. The thing is, uh, she's not really into metal music. Um, she's she has a very different musical background. Uh, it's more like pop rock orientated. She performed in a few cover bands, you know. Of course, they were like doing some like Brian Adams covers and stuff like that, but nothing nothing that was harder than, than this, you know? And um, I met her for the first time because she was, uh, um, she was a colleague, uh, a job colleague, uh, you know, um, from my, at my wife's uh, job, you know? So a doctor's assistant. There you go. And they were working together. Yeah, they were working together. Right now she's, she's a teacher at school because she started and something like that. But back in the days, you know, uh, when we started work, to work with her, it was in 2015 was the first time. And my wife told me about Tina, wow, she she's, has an incredible voice. And I have to admit that usually I'm not a big fan of female vocals when, when it comes to heavy music, mm. because um, usually they're, they're, they are more opera-like, you know, like, I don't know, Nightwish or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that guy that's into it. I mean, of course, that, that's very technical wise thing and it's awesome but but you know to me i discovered metal music with metallica acdc and then death metal so um for that aggressive part i need like aggressive vocals so that was the thing why i didn't like that oh opera yeah. singing <laughs> stuff <laughs> but then but then i listened to tina's voice and i thought wow she's got balls man yeah I mean, man she sounds she has that blues thing in her voice uh, and I love that she's she's there, you know. She has a presence with her voice, and we started to work with her uh, in 2015 on uh, our Commander Charge record, which was the first one she sung a um, cover version of Mike Oldfield's uh, Moonlight Shadow. And uh, after that, I always added her to every Sudaka record. Sometimes it was a um, ballad, you know, an acoustic thing. Sometimes it was a heavy thing. And this time I had the idea it, was, it would be cool to do a, a mixture of my voice and her voice and see if it, if it fits together. You know? And she did an amazing job and I think she kicks ass. Oh, it's incredible. I love that track. Oh. Man, it just... Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's so sick. And another thing is like the, we're talking about, you know, the comic and stuff with the, yes. the special edition and the bundles and stuff like that. I saw that. That looks incredible. I mean, puzzles. It seems puzzles... Yes. Uh, like the thing right now, and I love it. I'm all about it. Beers, beer, beers, hot sauce, and puzzles seem to be like where bands are like <laughs> happening to, and I'm all fucking about it. I love it. I love it. I mean, I was surprised that, that there was like something like a re reunion for, for the puzzle thing. I mean, I, I loved to do puzzles when I was a kid, you know, that huge things with pirate ships and water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Dro drove me crazy sometimes, you know, <laughs> especially where you have like nothing but water. Uh, so you spend hours, but I didn't know that there is uh, like a, you know, a reunion for the puzzle thing, but Marcus from MD Records told me that, yeah, that's a pretty cool thing and we can do it with the, the especially with the artwork. It uh, might work very good. And I said, sure, why not? But I wasn't really sure it, if it's going to be accepted because I'm not into puzzling anymore, you know, so I, I didn't know. So I said, yeah, sure, let's give it a try. And, you know, the people loved it. I mean, we did it uh, with a re-release last year. Well, the Pine Sets was the first yeah, yeah. time we offered the puzzle thing. 
So that was our first experience with the puzzle thing. And uh, we thought, okay, with Wolfbyte, you know, the artwork is perfect for, for that. So, yeah, and, and of course, that red wine thing, which is my personal favorite because I love yes, drinking red wine. <laughs> <laughs> so how's, how'd that come about? How'd you, I mean, that's, that's what I was saying, like beers, hot sauce or, or booze, hot sauce yeah. and puzzles seem to be the cool metal thing and I'm all about it. But how did the, how'd the wine come into it all? I mean, do you, is it, who, who'd you tee that up with? It was also Marcus from MDD Records uh, because there is a winery in his area, in his part of, it's not Bavaria, it's Baden-Württemberg, so it's a different part of Germany. And there, were, there is a, a winery that offers, um, they're making actually a really pretty good quality red wine. They won some prizes awards in Germany for their wine. Yeah, cool. And uh, they are offering, you know, that service that you as a band can uh, get your own red wine. So you have to pick, you know, what to taste and if it's dry or not. But uh, you can just customize it. You can do your own label thing. And they are just um, offering also their wooden boxes, which yeah. uh, looks really awesome. But it's without the, that printing on the front. It's just the box itself. And Marcus from MDD Records, he has uh, the opportunity uh, to print uh, the front of the box. So he said, let's try it out. So he first ordered one wine and one box just to figure it out if it works, if, how it looks like. And uh, the first prototype was like, wow, holy shit, this looks amazing with the artwork. So um, then we, of course, we had to calculate if, if it makes sense to release because that red wine, which is quality red wine, it's not a cheap thing like for two euros and uh, you have a hangover and that kind of hell on the next day. <laughs> so. Uh, we just had to calculate if it makes sense, you know, to even offer that kind of uh, special limited package. And I'm glad that it worked at the end of the day. It's limited to, I, I think, 25 pieces or 30, yeah. something like this. And, you know, unfortunately, we are not able to, to ship ship wine in, in other countries except the European Union because uh, of the customs restrictions so uh, there are so many so many countries you are not even allowed to to ship any alcohol thing so i so know you have a lot of requests yeah oh i know <laughs> i know because i always see really good stuff over there like all, all these rad bands having like beers and stuff yeah. like, oh i'd love to have that oh no sorry you're in australia but and then yeah, then we the ones we do get i've just i've been so excited to try not going to mention any names, Metallica. Um, okay. And uh, <laughs> and I've got the can. But man, it tasted like garbage. I was like, I really? can't, man, I wasn't, I wasn't a fan. Jeez. And the first Trooper oh. I had, I love yeah. Maiden, don't get me wrong. Uh, okay. I was really disappointed. Because I was really? like, oh, oh, ugh. Jesus. But the second one I had was pretty good. You know, you gotta make sure it's quality. Quality bands on that. Make sure it's quality. I, I want quality exactly. bands, not, not quantity, not quantity. Because That's you right. know, the, the, the bigger bands, you're not there about you know to sell as many copies as they can to because they have that big followership. You know, That's right. big audience spread all over the world. Um, but you know, we're not doing that for for the big you know fan base or whatever. We're doing that for the real fans. I mean that. If Sometimes it's better to, to do less, but with more quality. What if it is quality? I mean, you could be onto something here. You know what I mean? You could be like yeah. fully, you know, people would be like, we want more of it. Ship us like 200 cases. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and then you can. I know, I know. Uh, but but we, we always try to um, come up with something very special and limited to give yes, uh, the fans also the, the feeling it's not like a mess thing. Um, that they get value for for, yes. for the money and and on the other hand I'm a fan as well so and I also love red wine so this is something I gotta try on the release date I to be honest I also ordered two two packages and paid for them even though it's it's you know, wow. my pro product but but this is something um, I, I'm thankful that MDD Records you know how somehow figured it out to realize it so I just wanted to support support it you know and um so i ordered two bottles so two packages one you know to have put in my collection 
and one to open on the release date, which I'm going to do and going to film it and share it on Facebook. Oh, mate. I'm so stoked, yeah. boy. I wish I could be there to, to celebrate. That would be awesome. You know? That would be awesome. Uh, you know, that would be, yeah, you know, here I am. Anyway, I think that's amazing. But at least you can, but at least you can celebrate a little bit earlier than I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, see? That's right. Because we're in Australia. Yeah. Time travel. But I'm stoked exactly. for you. I mean, because there is something special that uh, for bands celebrating release day. It's such a, it, it's like having a new baby. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah, it is. Releasing into the world. You've got to celebrate. Exactly. I don't, you know. Yeah, the thing is, you know, you, you've worked, it's, it's, it's a result of two years of hard work. You know, you invest a lot of energy, time, money, but also feelings and personality you put into it. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, you know, the result sounds like it sounds because of the collaborations with other musicians. Every every guest musician brought his own, uh, you know, part, his emotional thing into the music. Uh, it's a result of working together with uh, the, the company, you know, the, the record label with Marcus and also with the, with, with the band itself, you know. So everybody was uh, really into it and um, put more than 100% into the record and then you have that day, the release day, and you can really celebrate it because you can look on this record and you know say, okay, I'm pretty satisfied with it. And uh, this journey comes to an, to an end at this point. So you know, of course there will be a new chapter opened in the future, but this journey is, yeah, is absolutely. ending here. Are you gonna be seeing the, the other boys? Uh, on the release day, you mean? Uh, yeah. I mean, not in person. I think it's going to, we just plan or see if we can make a Zoom session or something like this and we, you know, post it on or do even a live event on, on, on Facebook with a Zoom session. It would be awesome. But we have to figure it out, uh, the technical thing, because, you know, I know it usually if you're using Zoom for that kind of um, events, you, you need a business account because otherwise it's like limited to like two oh, yeah. persons. Yeah. So there's something like there, there are some restrictions. So we have to figure it out if it's technically possible to do it. Well, I've had like six people awesome. on here. <laughs> so that's yeah. you know, just like the Brady bunch. But um but no, nah, nah, you know, I, I hope you and the boys do get to to cheers each other and and uh celebrate all the hard work. But I mean uh, uh, of course uh you know you guys started in the nineties. You were probably still in school when when the band yeah. started. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I was like uh, 94. So I was like 16, 17 years old when I started with the band. Um, yeah, we were at school. I mean, we started as, as a school band. I mean, our first gigs were in a small clubs and we even had one show with... Uh, students from, from other countries that were like doing that uh, what do we exchange thing, you know, yeah. German students go to there, I don't know the term for it, but you know, they were there with uh, the German par uh, par parents and families and sitting, you know, together and they were celebrating like the last day being in Germany and then before they travel back to their countries and um, the teachers hired us because I, I think they didn't listen to our material before because otherwise they wouldn't <laughs> do it. Then we started, you know, doing the metal thing. We go, and everybody was sitting there like, holy shit, what's happening here? So it was a very fun experience to watch watch all the reactions. And, and especially, of, I mean, the kids liked it, but especially the families, uh, the parents <laughs> uh, were shocked. Yeah, so there was, uh, the, there was the beginning, you know, and then it became way more than like a school project band. We, we started like doing some cover versions of Metallica, but I realized right from the beginning that I just wanted to do my own material, not only be a covering band. Of course, it's helpful, you know, to understand the way of composing if you do some cover versions first, but I always, you know, started to write on my own material uh, as well. So, yeah, we were in the 90s. Right. You know, and what a, what a cheap, I mean, 14 albums, mate. You, it's such a massive achievement because I mean, a lot, let's be honest, a lot of bands get to two, majority of them, and they just go, you know, they they don't survive for that long. And there's there's definitely 
something special about what you've been doing for all those years that's that's kept you going and kept you pushing forward through through it all you know looking back you know through the everything you've been through to get to this point it, it must be feeling pretty rewarding that you've you've been through hell high water you've seen it all man yeah sure i you got it when you the thing is looking back you know on like you said, you know, on the whole career, it wasn't always like, you know, uh, everything's cool. There are ups yeah. and downs. Like it's, really? it's, you can compare it to uh, re- any relationship, no matter if it's your wife, your girlfriend, your friend, you have always ups and downs, you know, and uh, there were, a, there were a few times like parts in, in the career where I was thinking about, you know, you know, uh, quitting the band or even s- stop doing that. But there were always something the driving force that you know keep me continuing with with the music and songwriting. Uh, there were different things like sometimes it were friends that said, "Hey, come on, let's do it," because I still like on fire. And sometimes it was like I already have wrote two, three th- songs, and I just wanted to f- finish the thing. So um, there were always reasons for me to move on. But the ma- most important, two most important things were like um, that I still love making music I, I, I mean I'm now at, at the point that I'm very happy not to to be able to do it for a living because otherwise I wouldn't be here anymore when you start as a young kid metal fan your dream is like your big goal is like okay someday you just want to make make it for a living you know yeah making money and do do nothing uh, nothing else except making metal music so of course, uh, at some point you you will be disappointed because you find out uh, it's uh, it's not possible to do it. I mean, um, there are only a few bands that are that are able to do it, but uh, it's it's not nothing that's really gonna happen. Yeah. And uh, right now I, I'm at the point that I'm very happy and uh, consider myself as a very fortunate person not to be in that situation to make music just to pay my bills or my or my rent or whatever because uh, the music is the most important thing that keeps me you know on the track with with Sudakra because otherwise I wouldn't have any reasons to continue uh, why should I do that but I will I was always you know developing me as a as a musician as a composer I always enjoyed um, you know, hanging out with my best friends because no matter which member it was, they, they were always my friends, not business partners. You know, so that of course, on the other hand, when when a member was leaving the band, it, it touched me much more than it would than uh, if you compare it to it would be a business partner. You know, yeah, so it's like losing a friend because you yes. know you, you're not gonna spend that much time with him anymore in studio or in, on touring or whatever. But, you know, the thing is that I'm still here and doing what I'm loving with my best friends and uh, still have the same feeling after all these years, after all these albums, uh, when we just go talking back about the release, you know, I'm still as much excited as I was back in the 90s with the first album. It's not something I, I would say, okay, I've done it before so many times, so I get used to it. Not really, not at all. Right. Everything you just said, just, mate, just hit the mark with me, eh? A lot of stuff that I've been thinking about, a, a lot of like, because I, I mean, I'm 40 in a few months. So I'm, I'm getting a lot of my, a, a lot of people I know are uh, calling it quits or they're, you know, they're just moving on, um, yeah. which is totally cool. You know, my best yeah. mate, did, and, and I'm, I'm totally cool with that, but my drive is still the same. Like, they're like, mm. when are you going to stop? I'm like, I can't stop. In yeah, blood. I just and I everything you just said, especially you know, with people leaving, you know, sometimes yeah. and it, it can be it's heartbreaking sometimes, you know, having it people is, sort of walk away. So, everything you just said, totally like, yeah, that hit me really hard. Yeah. So, that's uh, you know, that's that's how, how, how it goes. That's uh, pretty much uh, you know, the reality. It's and it's not the business thing, it's not the touring thing. The most thing I was struggling with was really when people I really loved, you know, yeah. like quit the band, quit the band. 
So, uh, because there were other reasons. I mean, there are so many reasons why they quit. You know, sometimes it's a relationship, sometimes it's a job, sometimes they lost the, you know, the drive, they, they don't want to spend much more time in the rehearsal room or whatever. Because the thing is, being in a band like Sudakra is much more than a hobby. Yes. You know? of, co- of course, I, I mentioned before, I'm not doing that for a living, but on the other hand, we're doing it on a professional level. The expectations from, from myself and from the bands are higher than, than when you are band releasing your first album. Yes. So uh, you have to put much more energy and much more uh, time into it. But if you're playing so many shows and stuff like that and have a family and a job, full-time job by the way it's not you have to be sure that you're doing that for more than 100 percent because yeah. otherwise you you will lose the, that motivation after a certain time oh 100 100 percent, and i've seen it a lot so all my respect to you brother but thank you man mate seriously like you know you still got it and it and it shows and it shows on this album absolutely 100 <laughs> percent like yeah but uh you know of course touring and things like that you've you've toured everywhere you played you know massive festivals you've walking you played mate that's like uh, seven times or oh, seven times the dream i just want to go <laughs> I, I, I got a mate who's who's going next year and i said to him i said okay. mate, just just let's get a a, a smartphone and i'm gonna duct tape it to your head so i can uh, okay, get yeah. there and just stream it but um Virtual reality, yeah. mate. that would be awesome man journaling I mean, Wacken is, is very something very special for me as well because our first Wacken appearance was in 1998. So it was like four years after we just started with the band. So it's kind of, you know, following our career. So, you know, when you have the timeline, there are always spots on the timeline where we just were performing at Wacken. And our last performance was, I think it was the last festival, festival we performed on before the pandemic happened. Um, and it is, it's always, after all these years, it's still like a, like you're diving into a whole different world, into that metal crowd, metal mecca, you know. It's really, really, you, you, you can not describe it to anybody who haven't experienced it. I mean, you see the pictures, you see the videos, and it all looks cool and, you know, wow. But if you haven't been there, it's, you have to feel it, you have to see it. And it's like, you know, it's like an in a world just, you know, built for, for the metalheads. There are even big supermarkets uh, there that are built just for this event, you know, so you can shop shop your uh, your fruit, your tents, whatever you forgot, because back in the days when you forgot something, you were like, okay, holy shit, so uh, <laughs> this is going to be a funny weekend, but this time, pff, no matter, even if you forgot something to eat you know, for, your, for barbecue or whatever, you go in there, buy some stuff, and that's it. And they're just you know, um, come, come up with such huge thing, which, I mean, it became very huge. Even though back in 1998, when we performed the very first show, uh, I, I won't re- forget these feelings I had, you know, because you just park there in the parking area, you build up your tent, and then you walk to the festival area and you see these two big stages. They are not as big as they are right now, but yeah. then you realize, wow, I'm here and what's happening? And you know, you perform on the same festival as your big idols do, you know, your favorite bands, Skyclad back in the days and Blind Guardian. I was like, holy shit, and we are able to be backstage when we were like kids, you know, in 1998. And um, then on the next day, our, our show was uh, set up and it was on nine, nine o'clock in the morning in a t- small tent and we were performing in front of like 40 drunk people <laughs> so oh, that, but, but it was okay because we had this feeling like wow well, we, st- we were still part of it nowadays it's totally different situation i mean if you perform at nine o'clock in the morning you still perform in front of like thousands of people because this is a totally different dimension right now it became so so huge that you don't have to be afraid as a band um of the schedule or the location on which uh, or the which stage you have to perform or what what time it doesn't matter because it's always fully crowded so that's awesome yeah Wait. oh this makes me <laughs> want to go so bad i will one, be awesome. one, so, one day one you, day you know yeah if you ever make it make it to germany let me know you know so we can just hang up 
I know, yeah. I know. That would be awesome. Watch some Evil Dead. Have some have some wine. Yeah, watch some Evil Dead. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Bar- having a barbecue watch Evil Dead. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mate, that's heaven. I think I'm just going to do it. My wife will be like, where the fuck are you? And I'll be like, Germany? She's like, what are you doing in Germany? I'll be like, <laughs> Wacken. Don't join me. Yeah, that's it. But yeah. um, <laughs> have you ever toured Australia? Have you been down this far? No, unfortunately, unfortunately not. I, that, that's, to be honest, I mean, you, you mentioned it before. We were touring all over the world. There were so many places we've been, you know, China. I mean, Asia, China, Japan. Yeah. Even in India, you know, we performed like a few wow. times, America. But Australia is the only country that's still on my list. And it's an unful- unfulfilled dream. I don't know. I mean, of course, it's not not as not that easy for a German band, you know, just to say, okay, let's let's tour Australia because you know it's, it has to do with a lot of costs. You know, they have to be covered and stuff Absolutely. like that. I, I understand it. So that's that's why it's really hard. You know, you have to be lucky maybe to be booked on a on a tour that's already scheduled, stuff like that. But you know, flying over just to play. Uh, two single shows as a headliner, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, it's, it's not something uh, that will bring us um, down to Australia, but um, who knows? I mean, this is still an unfulfilled dream, it's still on my list, and I have the, mar- the pen in my, in my hand waiting for making that mark, you know, like check. Right. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Well, beers, Evil Dead, barbecue. Yeah. Hey, look, barbecue. we'll have to... Yeah, but one day, hopefully, man, because we are very far away. I do understand that. People don't like yeah. the big plane ride down here. But I think you'd really <laughs> enjoy it, dude. I think you'd... Oh, I, sure. I, I mean, that, that, that's not a question about enjoying you. Or, I would even fly over and play a show in front of 20 people just, you know, to be in Australia and, and uh, have that experience, you know, being there. Um, but the thing is, you still have to... We don't have any connections, you know. We don't have yeah. any connections to any local promoters or bookers or whatever. So that's, I think, the biggest issue we have to deal with. I'll send you, send you some links. Yeah, sure. Whatever helps. <laughs> people, awesome. people I think that would, uh, you know, you'd be able to have a chat to. But, uh, you know, hopefully the world gets back to normal so we can do all those things yeah. very soon. Because okay. uh, it's just crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, you know. It is. Have you been to Japan? Yes, yes. Uh, in 2017. I mean, we were doing a Asia tour um, with Equilibrium. We haven't been before in, in China a few times, but uh, the, on this tour, we had also two shows in Japan, in uh, Osaka and Tokyo. And we also had Taiwan on, on our schedule. So there were, were the f- so it, it wasn't that far away from Australia, right? Very close. Japan. That's everyone that goes, they, they go Japan, then they go, nah, and they go. Nah. Back. Yeah. <laughs> or they'll go, even go to New Zealand, hang out with the fucking yeah. hobbits, and then they'll go, yeah. nah, yeah. and I'll go back. But um, <laughs> it's across the road, mate. We're not far. We're not far. I mean, you know, we're, no. it's not like Mad Max. We are civil. No, 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 no. I know, I know. Yeah. So, do- so documentaries <laughs> on National Geographic, man. <laughs> of the big spiders and stuff like that. Yeah, we got those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we uh, we ride kangaroos to work with big Gatling guns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. important. Yeah, but, um... <laughs> oh, man, I've kept exactly. you a while. I'm sorry if I've uh, kept you here. But uh, how? Uh, what, what's next? The thing, what's next? I mean, with Sweet Acker, of course, the release date with my wine session um and after that um i still have a few side projects i have to uh, complete you know um and then we will see how this whole situation will turn up here in germany because right now at the moment the whole pandemic thing is getting a little bit better so all these lockdown you know rules are getting a little bit better. They are looking for exit strategy at the moment, but you know, you don't know how it's going to be in, in the winter or in the autumn. You know, so if there's going to be a next wave or whatever. So um, for me, I mean, our plans are like it would be a big thing if we can just play some shows next year, even though with registrations and restrictions and mm. whatever. Um, but at least you you are able to be on stage again. Uh, we will see. I mean, 
my fingers crossed and um, someday we will start writing new material for the upcoming album which will cover in third age as I mentioned before so but we are not in a hurry we just, we just wanted to enjoy this one here Absolutely. and uh, yeah do we rehearse because we haven't rehearsed of the new songs so far so this is going to be something I'm looking forward to mate that's going to be emotional I think for you getting in there busting out those songs seeing the boys yeah, of course, but not, not not emotional when it comes to performance songs because usually I'm spending too much time figuring out how to play the guitar and do the singer at the same time. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, because you do it separately when you're writing the material, then you come together and then you have to do the wildest things you haven't dreamt of. Like, what the fuck I was thinking <laughs> while doing while writing this stuff? Yeah, but uh, usually. Um, it gets better from album to album because I get used to it. You know, you have to separate your brain halves and then it all works. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's been absolutely uh, awesome hanging with you. Sorry if I've kept you a bit longer, but I've really enjoyed chatting with you. No, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome, dude. I mean, you broke the ice with that evil dad. Oh, like, so. I knew, I knew it right from the beginning. It's going to be awesome. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Hey, that means a lot, man. I'm glad you had a good time. You know, that, you know, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, 